Okay, in today's video, I'm going to show the basics of sketching with your Caesar Juliet or Romeo. It will work the same in both machines. Here are the supplies that you would need. So I have the pen adapter that was in the box with Juliet and Romeo. You'll notice in this adapter, it is specifically shaped to fit either a Caesar sublimation marker here or artist pre sublimation markers they have a very unique design they have a triangle barrel on them that's hard to see and it fits down in that housing exactly so it has a unique design to it you can use other pens if you can get them to fit in the pen adapter and to stay when you are sketching. I'll have more information on that coming up. I'm still testing and getting mixed results with that. But you place the pen adapter into the housing and then you can add in your sketch pen. And I'll show that here in just a minute. But you can use either Caesar sublimation markers or the Artist Pre. In both cases, I would recommend Caesar has various tips package or Artist Pre has a fine tip package. Now, you can also use the chisel tip as well, but pra practice with that, play with that. The fine tip is going to be your center point in your center location. Testing is the only way to know what is going to work with your markers, your paper, and your machine. Start with a low force to start, especially with these tipped pens. Mine is a little bit smushed there after I've been testing it. It could be a little bit finer, but it's still working, so I'm going to keep with that. That is, you need to test. Test with anything. You'll need a cutting mat, and then with the sublimation markers, regular plain old copy paper. This is great because it is cost effective. Copy paper. You can sketch. If it screws up, then you can just get another sheet. Play with it, test it, have some fun with it. Now, what you'll notice here, here's my finish. We're going to go through the process, but here's the finished product. Currently, as I record this video for the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software, it does not have a fill. So you would have to create your own fill outside of the software and bring it in if you want to add that into your design. It will do exactly what you see on the screen. So any of the cut lines is exactly what it is going to sketch out. So if you're using a sketch font, um, I did try some single line fonts. They did not work right. I need to do some more testing on that. Um, so, but there are sketch fonts. I found I have a lot from the Silhouette Design Store, so I've been using those. Um, anything that has a really thin line. Now this design, I can either leave as it is, or I can take my marker after I'm done and I can fill that in, just like old school coloring. Some people will like that, some people won't. Um, but you can just leave this as the outline as well too. So let's take a look at how I set it up in the software and how it's sketched out on my machine. It's very quick, and I just recommend that you just get in and start playing. So here I am in the Leonardo Design Studio software. I went to the design library and I chose a file called Get Lost. And then I opened it on my design mat and I'm going to resize this for my project. And I am choosing no, a material roll and set my media with the exact size that I have for my copy paper. Because of the way that Caesar, Romeo and Juliet function, you can do this. You do not need to have the mat set up because you are setting the starting point for it. So I sized my design and then I hit cancel because I forgot you need to mirror it. So I needed to flip that. And then I sent it on the send screen. I have the pen tool is selected under the blade tool and then a force of one. Test, test, test for your pens. You do not need a high force. And then it's sent to Juliet and it cut. I mean, it sketched. Anything that shows on the screen as a cut line is exactly what it is going to sketch out. 
as I mentioned previously, that at the time of recording this video, there is no fill. And in the case of your sublimation markers or any felt tip pen or any um, marker, you also need to be mindful of how much that marker is going to bleed. In the case of this design, if I did even put a fill in it, the chances are it is going to bleed on my design as it's sketching. It's going to oversaturate that paper and it's going to look terrible. So you need to keep that in mind, especially when you do start playing around with the sketch feature if you are trying to fill that. The other thing when you do this is it's just like if you were to use a pen and draw this out. Keep that in mind. You are telling the machine to do exactly what you would do by hand to sketch out a design. That means that if you were to draw this out and you were to scribble to fill in whatever design you have, it's also going to kind of cement that to your cutting mat. So things to keep in mind for your future projects with sketch pens. It is a great feature to play around with and the best way for you to know what is going to work is for you to get into the software, you to test designs. It is simply a matter of copy paper when you're working with the sublimation markers. Learn, test, have some fun, see what it's all about. And then I take my marker out and I cap it because you'll see on my cutting mat in the video in certain times, if I did not do that, then I would get ink on my mat. And then I've sped this up. I just took my sublimation marker. With sublimation markers, you do want to make sure that you are setting them upright for about 20 minutes before you start so that ink gets to flowing and is good. And then I wanted to show what the difference was with a small design. So I used a coaster, I measured the coaster, and I'm drawing a rectangle for that coaster size. I'm going to scale my design down. And in this case, the design didn't really fit the aspect of that square. So I ungrouped it and I then, I think I had to ungroup twice, yep. So I ungrouped it and again, and then I kind of moved the design elements around to fit the space that I had. And that's why I drew that square that was 3.75 um, inches width and height, is so I could use that as my design template. And I do this all the time. So I'm just kind of moving things around here, but I wanted to also show not just a big design where the double line for your sketch shows but also a small design. And I'll go into more detail here in just a second after this one is sketched. But you can see how I'm just kind of modifying this design to fit the area of my coaster. And design is can take me a long time in the process. So you'll see, I just couldn't make up my mind. I clicked on send and then I remembered after I went to send, that I needed to take that square away. I do not want it to sketch the square because it could transfer to the blank anytime you're using the sublimation. Now, pencil does not transfer to the blank, so you could use that on a piece of copy paper to draw where your size is. And then I simply sent this again. Now, I sped up the video. This is about three times the speed of the um, original. It really is super fast. You could probably go up to a speed of a 13, but a 10 works just as well. And sometimes faster speeds are not always better depending on your project and your materials. So keep that in mind for all of your materials with the Caesar machines. Now, a couple things I want to show here. Size matters. So this is the same design as I did in the beginning. And the smaller you go, sometimes you won't see the double line. It'll fill it in. But I made these larger, as you saw on the screen, and it didn't fill those ones in compared to this one. So some of them you'll still have to go back and touch up. But even looking closely at this one here, you, that double line you don't see as much, but I lost that definition in the dashed lines because I made the design smaller. The other thing I want to point out here is that there is an initial touchdown on any design, and that is also true of a blade. 
It's how the blade orientates. And so watch for that when you have your pen in your machine and you wanna make sure that your design is, um, watch for that and make sure it's not gonna interfere with your design or if it happens to be on the paper with your sublimation marker that you cut that little dot off because it does make a dot. This happened to just be on the outside edge of my cutting mat. So just a few tips there. And then I'm just going to heat press these. So I will speed this up, but you wanna make sure you have protective paper when you are using sublimation. You wanna protect your bottom surface and your top surface. You do not want sublimation ink to get on your heat press or that could transfer to other projects. So I'm using some Artist Pre protective paper. I'm gonna use some heat tape on this tote bag and everything is linked in the description below. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm going to pre-press this Make sure my seams are outside of my press so they won't interfere with any pressure. And then I'm going to apply this. I'm going to take a piece of protective paper and cover my bottom platen. If you would like, you could also you could also take a piece of protective paper or put some cardboard inside. I think I'm just gonna go with it. Or what I might do is just grab another piece of copy paper and I'm going to stick this inside. That should work. Sometimes the sublimation ink will transfer through. So then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut around this a little bit just so I can get the sizing. Nothing fancy. And place it where I want to. Keep in mind when you're doing tote bags that everything's going to go to the bottom of the tote bag. So if you place it too far to the bottom, it's going to be kind of folded under. Take some heat tape. Find the edge. Or grab one that's already on a tape dispenser. I found it fast. And this is just to hold my design in place while I'm moving it. And then I'm going to take another piece of protective paper. I want to protect my heat press. Sublimation ink is permanent. So put this on here. Make sure I don't move my bottom one. Put that on there. And make sure it's all on the press. This fits just perfectly. Ooh, that was close. And then I am pressing at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And it kind of is, it's close. So I'm actually going to turn this. I want to make sure that everything gets under the press. Make sure my seams are off. 60 seconds. Here we go. Now I'm going to release it carefully and just kind of let it settle. I don't want to bounce it. I'm going to let that settle. I'm going to pull it off the press and I'm going to set it on a heat safe surface. I am using an Artist Pre protective pad. I love this thing. It is heat safe for 400 degrees. Now, protective paper. If there is no ink transfer on it, you can reuse it again. I do not reuse the top one because as you can see here, there is an ink transfer. That could transfer to your next project. So I will not reuse that one, but my bottom is just fine. So I'm going to take my smaller design. I'm going to kind of cut around this. Just so I can take my coaster, position that how I would like, and I'm gonna take my heat tape again. Now this time I'm going to use what's more like a sublimation sandwich. So I am going to just give it a couple pieces of tape here to hold it in place. Sublimation sandwich. I'm going to take a piece. Let's see if it's wide enough. Yep. I'm going to take a piece of protective paper. And I'm going to create a sandwich. So I'm just going to fold it over to create like my bread layers. And then take my coaster. 
I have my bottom layer of protective paper, my blank, and then my print is on top. And then I place the other part of my sandwich on top, the protective paper. And I'm actually going to place that in my press and we're going to press that one for 60 seconds as well. Okay, now I'm going to carefully release it and I'm just gonna let that one settle while I am revealing this one. So like I said, don't reuse this if it's got um, sublimation ink on it, just throw it away. You don't want that on your press. And then we'll take a look here. So I have my sublimation design. And I can go ahead, let's take this out and see what it looks like. No ink on that, but it still protected my surface. And here I have my tote that was sketched with the Caesar Juliet. Same things will work for Romeo. Now I'll take this one out. Now keep in mind, this is hot. While I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna reach over and turn my press off. This is hot, 400 degrees. Let's take a look at how it is. Use heat safe gloves if you need to. And there we have our sublimation coaster. I'm gonna pick the whole thing up and I'll bring it up closer. So there we have the small one. You can see the difference in the detail, small sketches versus large sketches, and it's going to sketch those lines just like you see on the screen. So let's take a look at the finished photos. All the supplies are linked in the description below. Get into your Caesar software and your Juliet or Romeo machine and have some fun. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.